All right, so the boys just wrapped up its fourth season, and uh, I think it was the weakest season by far, but it had a pretty good to great finale. Um, so I had a couple problems with it so far. Like, for example, I think they just, re- I don't think the writers really knew what to do with some characters throughout the season. For example, the recycled Frenchie's, like, past, with this past coming to haunt him uh, by introducing, like, a new character in this season that we've never seen before, and it just seems really repetitive. Uh, I think they could have, like, I think there was a better way they could have gone about it by introducing him maybe in season three or introducing him in this season, but, like, building up to it, to, like, a relationship, I guess. But, um, so that makes me think that they thought of this after season three, so it was just added in because they didn't know what to do with Frenchie's character other than doing the same thing again. Like, the whole calling thing was so Frenchie can be out of commission in episode six, and then, so it can also cause some drama between him and Kimiko. I guess, but I don't really think it was handled that well. And then this brings me into my next character that I think they handled kind of poorly, which was Kimiko. And then the whole Shining Light army thing that she went after, like the human trafficking organization. Um, I believe she went on this mini quest for revenge, I guess, to hunt them down. And then they introduced this new character that she knew when she was in the army. And then it kind of just goes nowhere. I mean, obviously, I know it was so that she can also relate to Frenchie on that type of level and then talk about how they're both done wrongs in their past. But, like, they never come back to hunt her down. They just kind of leave. And then, I mean, again, this is the fourth season only, but there's still one more season. But, like, they just never come back throughout the episodes. And they just kind of leave her alone after that one incident with when she meets up again with that person. On top of that, there's also this huge plot hole in episode four. I don't know if many people have, like, uh, uh, remember this, but when Huey and Kimiko go to get Compound V from A Train, she's standing outside, and then they show like what looks like to be like sniper scopes or just a scope of a gun on Huey's head, and then they start shooting around Huey. They don't hit Huey, even though they had a clear shot at him, and it's just never explained. And it's clearly obviously plot armor, so Huey can survive. But again, this makes me dock down points for the overall season and the writing, because you don't even have to show the sights on Huey's head. You could have just showed the Shining Light Army riding up in a car and then setting their guns and then starting to shoot with like assault rifles or whatever. But they showed them aiming at Huey and then they missed. So that just makes me think that the writing is just the writing quality is just declining each episode. But yeah, it's just a little nitpick that worsens the quality of the season in my opinion. Additionally there was this whole like possible get together with Frenchie arc that they were kind of doing this season or up until the end. And that also seemed really repetitive because in the past, I guess the bond between both of them had been kind of explained to just be one of like a fam- family type of bond or like a family friendship type of bond. And then uh, Kimiko was also advising Frenchie to go after Colin and to explore or whatever. So it kind of seemed really redundant that like towards the end of the episode or the season, Kimiko gets back together with Frenchie. It just seemed really like unnecessary. Now, another character that I didn't really, I'm on defense about kind of was Sister Sage. Um, I think she's falling a little bit into the generic, smart character, super person with like everything being according to plan, mostly because we're not seeing how she's doing something. We're only seeing what it is she's doing. And then she's taking credit for that being her plan. And I think that's doing more harm than good to the season. It just comes off as clairvoyance and being able to read a script versus being able to actually plan things out because you're smart. Also, her backstory, if it's even true, is still a little bit shaky. I'm not 100% convinced. Uh, Like, I don't know how you get from curing leukemia when you're eight years old or when you're young, and then the doctors rejected your cure. And I don't really blame the doctors for rejecting an eight-year-old cure to um, leukemia, I guess. And then it jumps from that to hating all humans because they're animals and they don't listen to you, and then letting the world just burn. It's not, like, 100% convincing. And I still don't even know if this is 100% her backstory. It could have just been something she's telling Newman. And I would be kind of disappointed if they later reveal that it was still according to her plan and she just had another plan in mind and that she was telling Newman this for no reason or whatever. Again, she has super intelligence, so she is capable of doing these things. And she's capable of doing like an array of things that could either make people like humans listen to her or that could put her in a position where she doesn't have to ask humans for anything. And so the possibilities are endless. And then I've also seen people saying that she's not that smart. She's just maybe maybe like a, you know, above average smart person in the show. But like, I think that if anything proves that the writers are doing a bad job 
communicating to the viewers just how smart she really is because all the dialogue and scenes of her imply that she is extraordinarily smart and she is capable of doing like inhumane things but what we're actually seeing of her is not matching up with the standard that we hold her to for example we see the riot scene in episode one in episode two she knows mm is tailing her in episode three she talks about assassinating singer in episode four she causes starlight to beat firecracker so singer can't pass the soup control bill i guess so that was kind of smart but like uh i don't really think she's in episode five and in episode six she provokes mm into shooting her in the head and certainly doesn't seem like the smartest thing a smart person would do but um and it's still unclear if it was her plan and that's kind of what I'm saying, like, uh, I don't know if it was her plan so she can't speak to the politicians or be held accountable for whatever happens in that room. But analyzing what it is that we see, uh, so far she hasn't done anything that matches up with the super genius that she's, like, been written to be. And uh, the super genius that cured leukemia or that's great at quantifying and someone that can manipulate people. But she's not really doing things that, like, I feel like that idea of a person would do. And not knowing exactly what her plan is doesn't come off as smart since we don't know how she's reaching her plans or accomplishing her plans or reaching her goals. So all we see is her, like the end goal and her taking credit for it. And because we never knew what she was working towards, uh, it just is summarized as her being smart and it's all according to plan. And But then again, that, that whole episode was kind of a mess, so I'm not really too surprised with the problems I had with it. By the finale, she swoops in and says that there were a couple of curveballs, but... Um, Again, it's still went according to her plan, and I have a problem with the dialogue because it's in, it implies intention and purpose when she says, Newman would have been a shit patsy, stubborn, too many ideas, so I went another way. It makes it seem like she planned for a scenario in which Newman dies, and there was just no way to predict that Newman is going to die in this season. And again, on paper, the plan makes sense. Get Cinder out of office and then have Newman be controlled by Homelander, but there were... Uh, there were a couple of curveballs, such as the assassination attempt failing, and then, but then Singer randomly talks about how he put out a hit on Newman, and that only kind of works if Newman is dead, and she had no way of predicting that or believing that. Like, are you telling me that she knew Butcher had tentacle powers, and that he was going to join the dark side with Kessler after Ryan kills Mallory and leaves, and then he was going to go to Newman and then kill her? It just doesn't really follow up. It doesn't really make sense. It seems like a heavy plot hole to me. And then also, how was any piece of technology on the shapeshifter working in a bunker for the president-elect? That was not really explained. I think it's just your regular suspense, uh, suspense your disbelief, I guess. And then how did Annie find Huey from his signal and get there in time, uh, in time to fight the shapeshifter as well? And then this brings me to my next point about how the dynamic between Huey and Annie is handled. I don't really like what he did in the finale. Huey gets essayed again, and then... The angle of, I guess it's like arguably justified how Starlight initially reacted. I can kind of overlook that. But then they take this angle of Huey kind of making it up to Starlight. And then towards the end of the episode, Starlight kind of forgives him, I guess. <laughs> and then Huey's happy that Starlight is okay with him after him getting violated. And it just doesn't really make sense. I don't really like the angle that he took with that writing-wise. And uh, like, that's another nitpick of this season that I didn't like. Now for the finale, like I said, I enjoyed it. Uh, I think there were like a few plot holes kind of, but I don't really mind. And uh, it was definitely enjoyable for sure. And it was hype. And I do think that like they have a lot that they can actually now explore in season five because this was mainly just a setup for the finale. In addition to like Gen V season two, uh, I also didn't mind that they didn't show like Stan Edgar or Ryan or Ashley because I mean, they're obviously going to have something to do in the next season. So they don't, they don't have to show it in my opinion. And then... But I am curious as to what Ashley's powers are. And then secondly, the scene in the hospital was kind of weird. Like, I'm not too surprised that Ryan didn't show emotion after killing uh, Grace Mallory. But because by that point, he's already killed um, the stunt guy and his own mother. So I think he's more of a morally great character. But that was like some low level IQ play from Mallory. Because can we all agree like that's just a lot to dump on a child, even if you're that desperate? Because I can understand it was it was a desperate time because uh, Homelander would have began to kind of rule America if Newman gets into office. But I think Butcher was slowly getting into, like getting it across to Ryan. And then she threatens to lock down the place with the Halloween uh, gas. So it just doesn't, it seemed kind of like out of character for Mallory. And I'm kind of on the fence. I, I didn't like it in a way that I think it was just bad writing instead of like a bad character moment. So I don't know. Uh, but otherwise I think they handled Butcher, MM, like every other character, I think they handled them pretty well. 
Uh, I also don't mind human being killed by Butcher. I guess she had it coming, and it's just unfortunate. And then um, it was definitely sad that Frenchie and Kimiko still don't get to be together at the end because they get kidnapped. But uh, I'm guessing towards at the next season, I'm guessing after Starlight flies away, she's going to team up with A-Train and Ashley to rescue the boys out, I guess. And then Butcher might turn into the final villain. But um, yeah, that's about it for my review of the season and the finale, I guess. But uh, yeah, overall, mid-season, good finale. Yeah, peace.